Okay, so now we're going to round out um, a good portion of the rest of this section and see how it all comes together. So, um, and in this section, we're going to go through um, and not, not, not read as much scriptures, but we're just going to be referring more to the scriptures. And so, in this particular section, um, Ezekiel 37 deals with um, God and Ezekiel and how the dry bones were in the valley and how everything came together, sinew to sinew, um, and the bones kind of joined together um, as he spoke the word of the Lord. And so we need for you to think about how things are coming together for you. In the case of Ezekiel, you'll find that he used language. And he used language to speak to the dry bones so that the bones would come together even in the dry places. And so the, in this situation... You'll have to do the same thing. You'll have to follow suit. You'll have to speak the word of the Lord in your dry situations. And there are examples of this seen in John 6, verse 12, and Samuel, uh, excuse me, Psalm 63, verse 5. Um, in the midst of this, as things begin to come together, you must find the place of worship so you can live to worship God. Uh, the desire is that as you pass through the dry places or the dark places, um, that you don't stay there. The dark places represent um, people that have a purpose without a skill. Um, sometimes in the dark places you'll find people that have skill without purpose. Um, so it's important for you to be able to fully develop in ministry so that you can have a life of ministry. Again, um, you know, recognize the dark places, recognize um, the area where things need to be developed so that you can have a life of ministry, not just a moment or a season of ministry. So when there is misalignment, that means the things on the inside do not really match with the things on the outside. It's important for you to have an understanding of who you are as an individual and know your limitations. Know where the purpose and the skill are misaligned and then make the decision to grow. Make the decision to be developed. Make the decision to understand what stage you are in. And don't, you know, don't be self-deceptive, you know, in, in denial, um, believing that you're something that you're not. Um, understand that there are obstacles that could exist. And with those obstacles, it's desired that you work through them. It's desired that you don't decide to just fall short, um... I mean, the scripture says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that is true, but it's not the desire that you stay at that level. We are striving towards perfection. So in every area of gifting, it's desired that you move towards perfection. Um, and don't really just make excuses because you're not, you know, like, not like Jesus. You know, um, you don't have to, you're, you're striving to be like Jesus. You're striving to be perfect. And so um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8 to 10 does a good job in talking about that. And that's the scripture that you should um, go ahead and research and um, just figure out where there are obstacles. Um, within that, it's important for you to think about areas where things are not balanced. Um, and balance can occur where there is lack of skill or lack of purpose, Not there's not enough knowledge. Um, the things you place in priority could cause you to be out of balance. Uh, it could cause you to walk away in your own lust. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 and Galatians 5 verse 16 um, help people to kind of think about what it is they're doing. And of course not in, in, in not to develop a religious spirit where you're just functioning without any real purpose um, intended. You're doing things because it looks good. Um, and then at the same token... Um, there's the other extreme where so many excuses are made that everyone backs up and we don't really get a chance to see what is it you're, you're intended to do in life. And so, um, you know, social excuses are ones that just kind of give you leeway to have self-pity and just be in your own little quandrum. That's not being balanced either. So there has to be a balance in between who you are in Christ, who you're intended to be, where you are, and um, the resources that are needed to get you to that next level. Um, there should also be a push and a press. Uh, so 
you're constantly moving towards um, a life cycle of ministry, right? Um, in this slide, we talk about gums, be, gum sticks, um, and it, I, I would read Mark chapter nine, verse forty-three. Uh, because God does not leave us to be stuck. He really just wants us to be free. And um, so the excuses can kind of get us to be stuck, like how gum would stick perhaps maybe on the bottom of a shoe or in the hair. But there's always something that can loosen um, the hold of gum. So uh, just live in your freedom. Examine where you are with your relationship with God and understand what is required to make it through the next stage in life. More importantly, it's important for you to establish your identity, who you are, what you're supposed to be doing. And Luke chapter 2 verse 49, identity was established. Um, and you have to look at how your identity can also be established. Figure out what the business is you're supposed to be doing for the Father. And a way to do this is to consecrate yourself. And this is the point where we're going to actually have a stopping point. Um, Jesus decided to consecrate himself for by fasting and praying for 40 days. And you're going to see that in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. And this is something that I'm going to encourage you to also do. When you do your consecration, I want you to have a journal. I want you to write down things that have come to you each day. Um, your consecration may extend beyond 40 days. In addition, you may decide that you want to have um, communion, Lord's Supper, during that 40-day period. Uh, you're free to go ahead and do that, but I would encourage you to journal and write down what you're getting as a result of the consecration and what it is that um, the Lord is speaking to you, right? 